Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper, and if you caught Saturday's video, you saw me boring the cylinder for my AD Baker steam traction engine, and we bored that on the horizontal boring mill. There were a lot of great comments, a lot of great questions, um, a lot of stupid comments and questions also, I mean, guaranteed. But a lot of you had raised some concern with honing, and Everybody I've talked to that's done this kind of stuff before with steam engines says the honing is not necessary. But I thought about it more and more and I thought, you know what, I want this thing as good as it can be. So I ran it to my partner shop in the Twin Cities, um, they're the hydraulic shop, and had them throw it up on the honing bench and they honed it. Now this hone is what you would do for a hydraulic cylinder, so the cross hatching is not there. That I will add later. That is something that I will build a tool and just do it quick. Um, and it's real simple and easy to do. But what we were trying to do is get this thing as true as possible. Boring it on the boring mill was just to get it round. And then we did the honing to make true it up even better. So well, right now I'm going to throw up some clips of the honing and then we'll get into the questions. And so here is the finished product, nice and smooth, nice and clean. Um, this will work amazingly well. Um, but like I said, I will just uh, do the cross hatching myself because we couldn't quite do that with the honing bench. So we had a lot of really good questions and comments. Um, many of you don't have any concept of steam. So that, that really did show in the comments and the questions. Um, internal combustion is a different animal. With steam, you're powering both sides of the piston. Um, you've got uh, oil administered through the steam. So the steam line coming into the engine has an oil port on it. In my case, I have two. I'm gonna put extra cylinder oil into this um, just to protect everything, more than most people do. Uh, I've talked to a lot of guys that have steam engines and they're like, yeah, that's a great idea, do it. So I'm gonna put in more cylinder oil. Cylinder oil is very cheap in comparison to doing this kind of work. Um, this could have been a very costly job and uh, there's a lot more to it. We're not done yet. So some of the questions um, people were asking about the piston. You know, shouldn't you have the piston before you bore the, bore the cylinder? Well, no, because I'm making a new piston. Um, the new piston is going to be aluminum. So when I make the new piston, I need to calculate out thermal expansion of the cylinder and the thermal expansion of the, the piston, and then size everything accordingly. That's where things will get tricky. So I need to know what the cast iron will do, and I need to know what the aluminum will do. Um, I'm looking at a couple of different grades of aluminum, so that will be determined when I get closer to doing this. Um, a lot of people asked about making the rings, and no, I'm not gonna make the rings. And the reason for that is, is there are companies out there that are very good at doing that and have some amazing products um, that they've developed. But by the time I set up, make the rings and everything, I'd be losing money if I had work in the shop. Um, right now I don't have much for work in the shop, but there are a special set of rings that I wanna try on this that have a bronze wear ring uh, around them. So it's kind of a, if you lose lubrication, that's a safety thing. So I want to try those. So I'm going to have those made for me. Um, when we get time ready to do the piston, I'll get all the specs on the, on the cylinder to the ring manufacturer. And then I will 
figure out with them what I need for my groove depth and everything on my piston, and then we'll just make everything at the same time. So that'll work out well. Um, I got to make a new piston rod. Um, that's nothing special. That's just a, a chrome rod we're going to use. Um, thread both ends, real simple. Um, but there's a lot of work that needs to go into this yet, um, but I'm hoping this will cure my problems. <laughs> uh, I had no, no power whatsoever, um, and at 180 PSI, you should have good power. I think when I pulled the piston out, the rings did not expand, so the rings were gone, but the bore was not true, so we had a lot going on, so we're going to just fix all that. Several people made comments about how I set it up wrong, and, oh, you know, you're an idiot. Um, yeah, you get those comments all the time. You're an idiot. You don't know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. I did this job the best way that I had available to me. Um, if I were to do this otherwise, what I would really like and would have been the best way to do this would be on a vertical boring mill or a vertical turret lathe. Um, that would be the ideal way. Um, I could have set it up in the lathe, might have been a little better, but again, boring mill is designed for boring. So it worked out extremely well. I'm very happy with the outcome. Um, there were questions about sleeving, comments about that. Um, yes, it could be sleeved, but it really doesn't need it. Um, I, I was able to open it up enough to get it where I want it, so it, it'll work out great. Um, and there's still meat there to bore it a couple more times if I only have to take, you know, 50 thou at a time. I think I've got, feels like I probably got at least 150 thou um, total that I could take out of this and still be in good shape. So um, we had a lot of comments about the coaxial indicator and using a dial test indicator, um, how I'm stupid for using a coaxial. I used both. Um, I didn't film the whole thing of using both, but I used both. Um, I used the coaxial to get me close and then I switched to the dial test indicator and dialed it in further. So even with that arm length and throwing everything off, I'm double, I double checked everything. So I want this to be accurate. It needs to be accurate. Um, and again, that's kind of a, a gray area with steam engines. So I went probably above and beyond what anybody else would do, but this is mine. I want to make sure it's right. And if I ever have to do it again for somebody else, there's a whole bunch of things that I learned that will make this go faster. So there were a lot of things that I learned about setup on the boring mill with this and indicating and um, all that kind of stuff. Locking the quill on the boring mill and feeding with the table was absolutely the best way. Um, would a boring bar with an outboard support have been better? Um, possibly and, and probably likely. It might have been easier to dial it in with an, an indicator. Um, I could have put it at each end and dialed it in that way, but it worked out great. Um, I had one or two comments of people saying I should weld it up and rebore it with a portable line boring machine. No. Now, first off, it's cast iron. You don't weld cast iron up. Um, there's plenty of meat here to take out, and that's just stupid. Um, <laughs> and I don't own a portable line boring machine. In fact, there is no work in this region for a portable line boring machine. Uh, I looked into one 10 years ago. I've talked to many people for the last 10 years thinking about getting into it, and there just isn't the work for it. So uh, like I've said before in my videos, my region is dying, and uh, I've looked into this thoroughly. I know somebody that bought one about 12 years ago, and it's been sitting in, the sh in their shop unused for 12 years. So there just isn't the work out there for it, so having one doesn't make sense but I have the boring mill, which does make sense. Um, that has been used for many different op, you know, jobs and has been a very good machine to have. So it worked out great for this. And I'm sure there's a lot of other comments and questions I'm missing out on, but I think those covered most of the, the really important ones. Um, you know, there was one other about taking a skim cut on the steam chest face there. No, absolutely not. Um, that is already machined and set to what it needs to be. The riding surface inside of the valve is matched to the depth. So taking a skim cut and truing that up to the bore would have been absolutely stupid and probably would have caused way more work in the long run. Um, setting it up on an angle plate and bolting it to the face, 
that would have worked if I had an, you know, a couple angle plates big enough. Um, I do have a big angle plate, but the center hole isn't big enough and I just, I would like a through hole. So doing it the way I did it was absolutely the best way I could have come up with and is how I would do it again and again and again. There's no doubt in my mind I would do it exactly the same way uh, unless I had a vertical boring mill. So with that, I think that answered everything. Um, uh, other than a few questions about the tooling, the inserts, and yes, I um, definitely have been looking at buying some different tooling, um, insert tooling that would have made this better. I did this job with what I had on hand. Considering there hasn't been any work coming in the shop lately, I didn't want to spend money on tooling. Um, I knew a hand grind on a, on a high-speed steel should have worked, but this cast iron is very old and very tough, so it didn't work the best. What did work was a hand grind on a carbide braze tool. Um, that worked extremely well, but there are indexable tools that I will be investing in eventually um, when things start to pick up again. So with that, I think we'll end here. Uh, if you have any more questions or comments, leave them below and I'll try to address them. And uh, until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.